Thank you, JJ. Well, there is such a short window of fully enjoying our outdoor living spaces. Today, Leanne Kiyosek has Steve Barkhouse focusing on how to make the most of them. Really important information here, Leanne. I just feel like I had the Coles notes. Steve Barkhouse was trying to <laughs> hit my red seal in the commercial break, Michael. There is so much to learn about decking right now, and Steve has us all decked out and ready to go. You Okay, well, let's just share with viewers what you were informing me of. Yeah. So During I asked, the commercial break. Yeah, so I asked you, what's that? You said? Well, I thought it was cedar. I didn't yeah, smell it. Yeah, it's not. That's the new PT. That's cedar. We've got ways of fastening it with no fasteners visible. It's going to be fun. We have a whole lot of, as you would say, would you call that PVC or what do you call that? This is called Trex. Yeah, and it's a, a composite material. So you can see it's crazy heavy. That is, compared. that's crazy heavy. Yeah, isn't that heavy. nice? But no warranty, no maintenance. Sorry, no maintenance, lots of warranty. We are getting ahead of ourselves. Let's show you some inspiration first, yeah. and then we're going to get into the products at the end of uh, this segment and in our next segment. This is actually a before. It is. Yeah, it looks like a nice deck. You know, it's got the cedar deck, cedar railing. We did that for a client about five or eight years ago. Um, it's a roof deck, so it took advantage in the glebe, in the heart of the glebe. It feels like you're in the Muskokas when you're sitting out here. But lots of maintenance, you can see. Um, the couple is here and retired to Ottawa, so they're trying to get away from the maintenance. Um, and they... When, they, when we did the deck, they found out how much they used it. So you can see what we've transformed it into. Um, it's an outdoor living Whoa, area, really. So on the left, swanky. isn't it nice? Well, you know what, mostly it's the furniture. <laughs> the covered portion um, on the left-hand side, so extending the summer a month on each end, so you can go in there, close up the windows and the doors, and if it's nice out like it is today, you open it up and there you are sitting outside. So you said the couple wanted less maintenance. Tell us yeah. what you chose to use in order to cut back on the maintenance. Well, you can see the um, weather wall system in the walls, so the windows. So they can either be up like they are now, keeping the cold out, or they can be put down and they tuck it behind that little half wall. So you don't even see them um, with a screen on there to keep the bugs out. The doors can be closed as glass doors. So again, you put a little space heater in there, you're gonna stay nice and warm. So this is a great example of if you have a healthy budget, then you can have a fabulous, well, elongated outdoor living exactly. space. Exactly, and you don't have to be out in the sun, right? You can enjoy the outdoors and not be out in the sun. Um, you can see it feels like a cottage with the exposed beams and the beadboard. I'm having a bit of a deja vu. Did we visit the before at this home? Years and years ago, uh, you know maybe? what we might have. I think we yeah, did. I think we did. You're okay, right. so now so that's, that's an a nano wall system. So the nano wall system opens right up. So the next picture, that's where the screens are, and they tuck into the side. So it, you just walk. There's the screens down, but the other one with the doors wide open, you can walk right out. The outside comes right in. So, so essentially, this can be a cottage you because you said you feel yeah. like you're in the Muskokas when you you're. You do. You're up in the trees. It's absolutely beautiful. They've got a little uh, fountain down below, so you can hear the water running. It's it's unbelievable. Great. Now co uh, complete contrast. Yeah, yeah. Well, we want to get us remind us of winter, right? Out in Orleans, nice size, nice hedge onto a park, but you can see it's it was just grass in the summertime, which is okay. They wanted to have a hot tub and a barbecue, but you can see it's just kind of perched by the back door, and it's your stereotypical siding on the outside of the house. So, what we've done is Whoa. redone the backyard. So there's four different areas, but they got an outdoor kitchen which we wanted to feature. They got a beautiful little um, sitting space here. There's the kitchen straight ahead. They've got the hot tub built into the wood deck, so wood, different levels to add a little character. Um, you can see the timber structure. It's absolutely gorgeous. A little pizza oven there, isn't that cool? And we uh, show you these extensive and beautiful and, and um, elegant and exquisite renovations, thinking you may be able to take one or two things from it to apply it to your own backyard. Absolutely. Look at the outdoor fire pit. It's very popular now. A lot of people have those. It's a gas fire pit. We run the gas line out. Um, any time of the year, you can have a fire out there. And I'm guessing eighty to a hundred thousand dollars for uh, a backyard like that. Probably that full. Yeah, yeah, with Ooh. the hot tub. Okay, so if that's not in your budget, but you do want to change, Steve said earlier that building a deck gives you a hundred percent return. Yeah. So maybe that's the long range plan, but for now you have a little weekend project and a couple of buddies and you're ready to roll up your sleeves. When we come back, we are going to show you the latest and money saving and yeah. time saving ideas with Steve Barkos. Well, let's go back to Leanne and Steve for more outdoor living inspiration, Lily. <laughs> There's so much inspiration here, it's coming <laughs> rapid fire, I have to say, Michael. We are talking about enjoying your outdoor space uh, for longer. And Steve is also wanting to bring along examples of things to show that times have really changed. Oh, At yeah. one point, you would have had to hire a mason to create this look. Now you just need a drill. You do in a couple of screws, explain yeah. Explain that, if you will. So that's a, it looks like a stone product. You can see the metal flange here, so you just set that on the wall. You put in the screws and you lap the next one up. It's got a little um, lip there, a tongue and a groove and off in it goes. You stack it up, you can do it as a, 
uh, a landscape feature or just right on the side of the wall. But what kind of bracing would you have to have? Nothing, just a standard wall. But what are you screwing it into? A wood wall. It's so you have a 2x4, 2x6 wall. Two wall with a sheathing on it, and you screw it right in, try to hit the joists. Where you go? <laughs> or the studs? Try to hit the joists. So then you need a stud finder. Stud we finder. Had that. that was another show. <laughs> okay, you wanted to show this off, but we promised viewers that we would get to decking. And yeah. uh, there is so much to choose from. And actually, a commercial break question from Michael oh, is a valid point for this. So. Yeah. What is the best bet still for decking? Does it all depend on budget or does it depend on lifestyle? A bit of both, um, budget and maintenance. So how much budget and how much maintenance you want to put into it. Um, so typically it starts, the old pressure treated wood was the green stuff. It's now a much more attractive wood. Um, doesn't have the arsenic in it. So if you lick it or something, the kids get at it, it's still okay. Um, and then we can have the hidden fasteners. So there's no screws going in. So it really jazzes Hold up the deck. Hold that fastener really steady for everyone if you would. Yeah. So what's, what's magical about the hidden fastener? Well, it goes in to the joist and it holds the deck in place from below. Um, we have another metal one here that does the same thing, that you mount onto the joist and put the screws up through and into the underside of the deck boards so that you don't see the screws. So it's just a matter of eliminating the visual of the screw. Exactly, and just taking it up that one step, and again, it's very cost effective. So you go up to cedar, which is a little bit more expensive again, um, but has the natural resins in it so that it won't rot as quickly. I don't even know if we're going to get to siding today, so let's <laughs> focus on the decking okay. because you took, and this stuff is beautiful, this is really yeah. high end. This and is from Zuri, um, it, it comes in all different shapes and sizes and colors and finishes it looks like natural wood but you can do some really incredible details with it and designs. Oh you had the brochure. Yeah you so can bend it. You what's can... the whole concept? This is really pricey though isn't it? It's Those a lot more expensive. Yeah you go from wood to Trex decking which is a composite and then this again is a composite material um, but that it, it, it's got the 25 year warranty on it so you don't okay. touch it for 25 years. I want to serve everyone well. So we go from wood to Trex decking. The right Trex here. decking yeah. is here. It's underneath everything. Yeah that's a fascia board here. So this is the heavy one you had me lift earlier. That's right, yeah, we've got it right here. Okay. And that's. I don't have my steel toe boots on this one. <laughs> can't right, draw <laughs> So t let's show everyone what we're talking about and why this is special. So again, it just goes onto the deck. It's really heavy. Um, it does expand and contract in the heat, so you have to put little spacers in, but there's no maintenance. That's the key. You're not staining it every three or four or two or three years. Um, you're good for 15 years with Trex and, and uh, at a minimum. So I'm guessing that you're paying a lot more money for something like this where yeah, without the problem. Probably three times in material more. So three times yeah. the cost. But in terms of what you're seeing people want to go for? Well, they're trying to get away from the maintenance, and that's that's what we show. They, it's just, it's a lot of woodwork to sand and refinish every couple of years. I promise you another program will get to the decking and the other sorts of things for your outdoor space. But let's finish up with railings, sure. because no one really wants to spend a lot of time painting those deck rails or the vertical balustrades or whatever they're no. called. So and this is really interesting. Tell us about this, Steve. Yeah, so this is a... a pre-manufactured system you just put the spindles in when you buy the top and bottom rails they come pre-drilled so all you do is get the snap them all together and put it in place it's lickety split you so can if see you invite someone to the cottage this is a doable job for a, a what a, an afternoon a couple of beverages a little bit of help <laughs> lots of sun you're all set to go and and the aesthetic is very like, really straightforward it, and, well, it's, and it's beautiful it really is beautiful from the old wood deck or deck railings we had viewer questions that we didn't quite get to, but we'll have Steve back another time to answer viewer questions. But I think it was really, really great just to show how things have changed. And your preference, if you were just quickly in closing, if you were putting a new deck on, which one would you choose, A, B, C? You know what? Um, I think you transition. I've got a lot of cedar in my backyard. It's a lot of maintenance. And you have the um, contractor's discount. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's a lot of work. So I, I'm trending towards the new uh, composite materials. Oh, Michael, here, a little bit of bracing for you.